same perception of Africa as a, a young child who's uh, very hungry, has to walk many miles for water. What are you trying to say? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, what, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Come to Ghana and try the chili sauce, Maku. It is absolutely delicious. And if you want a beer, it's Mapacho Mimi Beer. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I just want to know. What are you trying to say? <laughs> the image of Africa has been distorted around the globe. So we are using YouTube videos to change the narrative of Africa one step at a time until Africans stand and embrace their culture. No one is going to tell the story of Africa. So as Ambassador Vix, I'm here. I'm here to unlock the real Africa with the two friends that I have here. Once again, my name is Ambassador Vix. Kindly subscribe to the channel, you comment, like, and you share. Hello, you're welcome. Hi. Are you couples? Yes, we're married. Yes. Yes. Why are you looking at me like that? What? <laughs> I'm just so interested about what you're going to ask me. Yeah, right. that's what it is. Yeah. So, where did you guys come from? Uh, we came from uh, England about four, uh, four, day, four days ago now. Um, flew into Accra after a very high recommendation of coming to Ghana from a colleague of Jess's. Okay. Um, and I was a bit, I thought it might be quite hard work coming to Ghana. Um, so, I actually said that I'd quite like to go to a country where I didn't have to think as much um, and the the visa situation the yellow fever um, uh, vaccination and malaria tablets was a factor I was like I, I was almost lazy and I was like oh, I can't be bothered to do that but you know um, when I did a bit of research online I found a couple of good articles and they really described how wonderful the some places within Ghana were and uh, after talking with Jess, Jess was like, I'd like an adventure and, and I was like, yeah, actually, let's, let's do it. Let's do it because we've been, we haven't been on holiday for two years. So we really wanted to go and explore and see somewhere new and have a bit of an adventure. So, yeah. So, so we're here for, how long are we here for? Ten. Eleven days. Eleven days. Eleven days. Okay. So why are you in Ghana? So we came to Ghana because um, a friend of mine, or a couple of friends of mine, um, back in London, uh, are from Ghana, and they were just—I was asking them about their culture and stories, and um, everything they told me. It just sounded so amazing here. They talked lots about how friendly and welcoming the people are, and how beautiful it is. And there was countryside, there's tropical rainforest, there's beautiful beaches, and I thought it sounds pretty perfect. Okay. Um, I believe um, the Ghana Tourism Board or the Ghana Tourism Industry have put some measures in place to make sure that touring in Ghana is easily. So what are the things that the, the industry or the board has put in place of which has made your uh, movement in Ghana very easy? Uh, well the, 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 we're, because of COVID, there's a PCR test to get into the country. So you have to do one in London before you, before you leave and you have to do one on arrival. But we got to the airport and moved very quickly through the airport. Um, everything went smoothly. Um, and yeah, and then l luckily we had a, I had a conversation with my boss just before I left and he said, oh, you're going to Ghana. My personal trainer's from Ghana in London and uh, I'll get you a driver. So uh, a friend of mine sorted this driver out and we rocked up and Alex picked us up from the airport and he's been amazing and he's given us a really uh, great sort of introduction to Ghanaian sort of uh, society and culture by just assist like giving us information as we're driving along the road in his uh, in his Uber. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we drove all the way from Accra to um, stopped off in uh, Bojo Beach. No, Bojo, Bo Bojo Beach first. So yeah, but yeah, okay. yeah. So that was nice. And then he, we had one night there, picked us up, and then we drove down to um, Cape Coast. Um, and we had a very harrowing visit to the um, castle, Cape Coast Castle. Nice but great to, well, harrowing but very important history that all Europeans should learn about and all Europeans should understand what happened. Um, and yeah, and then he, it's just been great as we, uh, you know, 
as we go along the road, Alex was pulling into, we, I just say, what's that? And he'd just pull in and we'd meet someone that was selling, you know, fruit or coconuts um, or like coffins. We went along and saw someone who was doing coffin carving because one of Jess's friends he recommended that as well. So we stopped and met. And every time we've met anyone along the road, it's just been this only uh, happy to see us and welcoming and you know you know excited to show us Ghana which is really nice not you know we, we traveled in India um, and South America and some places and sometimes tourists don't get a very warm welcome but in, in Ghana everyone has met us with a smile nearly nearly everyone maybe like one person has been like who are you but <laughs> on the whole nearly every person we met has been super lovely and friendly. So thank you, Ghana. Nice one. Thank you, guys. So what, what were some of the perceptions, of which ne negative perceptions were you having when you were coming from England? Um, I think one of, the, one of the overarching perceptions of traveling in Africa um, for European people is that it's, it perhaps feels dangerous here um, and that it can feel unsafe. Um, and I think that's probably one of the, the main reasons why people feel uh, worried to come here. Like they hear stories in, you know, uh, from South Africa about hijacking. Um, they hear stories about um, Northeast Africa and some terrorist attacks and things. And I think, unfortunately, Africa is a massive continent, but it's not necessarily perceived that way by the Western world. It's really strange. I think people in the Western world think of Africa as more like a country. Than a, than a continent. And we were saying uh, here, you know, just as we arrived, the, um, the latest variant, the Omicron variant was announced and everyone was really worried for us and whether we were gonna get back and whether it was gonna be okay or if Africa would go on lockdown. And um, I just thought it was so interesting because I said to, I said to my friends, like I measured uh, the, I looked on a map and said, right, from uh, Accra to Cape, um, Cape Town, it was something like 8,700 kilometers. Wow. And then you look at Paris to Istanbul, and it's something like 2,700 kilometers. And so if the, if the Omicron variant was in Istanbul and we were going on holiday to Paris, no one would be asking us if we were going or not. And if, if you know, we'd be worried because it's so far away. Yet Cape Town to Accra is like triple that. So I find that really interesting that the perception is that it's more like a country and people don't realize that each individual country in Africa is very different and has totally different culture and very different levels of security and you know, um, you know uh, the way they treat and, and look after tourists. I think that's there's a lot to be done there. The, 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 the scale is something that we were talking to my niece about before we left as well and I said to my niece Emily I said how how big do you think Af uh, Africa is in relation to the United States? And she said, oh, the United States is bigger. But we are the second largest <laughs> continent in the world. Oh, yeah. Well, then we, then I, we looked at it on the, on the uh, when you do the fitting the different countries into Africa. And you can fit China, India, the United States, Eastern Europe, Italy, the UK. The whole of Madagascar is the same as the UK. And people just don't understand that because the way the map is drawn, it looks, it looks small, small. Yeah. and that's really, really and, and therefore everyone thinks, well, if you go in there, it's right next to there. So yeah, this, uh, it's, it's that, that would be an interesting thing to get across to people that are coming here on holiday, just the scale and the, the diversity of the country in terms of yeah, its people and, and its, and its uh, environment. Were some of the negative uh, perceptions true? When you came here, uh, so the, 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 well, the negative perception I had was that it might be quite bureaucratic and difficult to do things, and maybe like India, sometimes things aren't very easy to do. You know, there's a lot of processes, but that that hasn't been the case. Um, and also, we in, in India when we travelled there for six months, we found that it was quite a love-hate relationship. Sometimes, like in the morning, you would get a lot of hassle. Jess, Jess would get a lot of hassle, wouldn't you, sometimes, like from men specifically. And in Ghana, just touch wood, zero trouble. Just just a lot of friendly people that are all, um, you know, here to make sure we have a good time and look after us, which is 
and really respectful. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, it seems a very, very fair country and very open and, and friendly. So does it mean that um, most of most of the things that the media, the Western media, portrays about Africa and specifically Ghana, is wrong or is not true? I don't think you see much in the uh, in the Western media about Ghana specifically. Um, but uh, you, you see in the media, there's always stories of you know, uh, like famine, war, uh, malaria, um, AIDS, like all these, you know, like, um, like lots of charity adverts and things. And it's always the same perception of Africa as a, a young child who's uh, very hungry, has to walk many miles for water. Um, and I don't think uh, some of the more positive stories come across through the media. Like Nollywood, for example, like is so huge. It's the I think is it the I feel like it's I'm sure I yeah it's the, any any uh, country in the yeah. world yeah yeah how amazing and yet people don't realise that they're not aware of that or um, you know the fact that uh, there's I think it's, there's something like more tropical rainforest here than there is. Like it's second to the Amazon or something like that. I can't remember what the facts are, but it's um, there are there's more forest here to be protected um, after the Amazon is like obviously number one, but then shortly after that it's this forest here, and people don't realise that either. Um, there's so much diversity from a, a natural point of view, um, but also from a cultural point of view. So do you think that um, people should travel to Africa or Ghana? to unlock the true Ghana or to unlock the true Africa? Definitely, definitely. Like, I will be going home and recommending Ghana to all my friends. I think it, it feels very safe here. We said we traveled a lot um, and I, I, I stepped pretty much off the plane and we walked through Accra and I've said immediately I feel very safe here. Um, and I think, as a woman, I think that's really important. I've traveled to parts of Europe and felt less safe. Um, I think the beaches are beautiful. I think there's a job to be done here um, for tourism in terms of there's lots of litter on the beach. Um, some of the customer service in some of the hotels needs a bit of work. Um, I think um, there's lots of education to be done around how actually it's quite easy to travel around Ghana, um, providing you uh, you you know make relationships with the locals and that you employ local people to to help you travel around, i.e. drivers. Um, or guides, um, and I think I would definitely recommend it. I think it's a wonderful place. So, what are your final words to the people out there? Come to Ghana. It's beautiful. The people are the most friendly, warm, welcoming people. I think there's so much to see and ex explore and adventure here. Like you should come to Ghana and see it for yourself. What about you? Come to Ghana and try the chili sauce, maku. It is absolutely delicious, and if you want a beer, it's Mapacho Mimi beer. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Mapacho Mimi beer. Right. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I just want to know what are you trying to say. <laughs> What was he trying to say? I think he was trying to say, I'd like you a beer, a beer? please. Me pacho me me beer. Ah, me pacho me me beer. Please, I'm give... pretty close. Come on. <laughs> me pacho me me beer. I was pretty close. I'm a pacho me me beer. So, me pacho me me beer. Yeah. Me pacho me me beer. And me pacho me me kube. For a coconut. Me kube. Kube. Oh, your pronunciations. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>